I'm Monique Saltani. I'm a wine expert, a journalist, and I'm thirsty for life. This is Wino TV. Holy smokes, Joel, you are the godfather of Zin. We're culture. I chose this wine because it's the most obscure and most difficult to get of any of the wines we make. 20 bottles to go now. <laughs> and agriculture. It is this variety that is California's heritage variety. Smithsonian, Vintners Hall of Fame, Godfather of Zinn. I'm guessing when you started out, you didn't expect all that. Come together. Hard to believe it was over 40 years ago that Ravenswood was credited for putting big, bold Zins on the map. I am so psyched to be here in Sonoma County today. I am joined by the godfather of Zin, and I'm also joined by Gary, who is the director of winemaking here. Uh, Joel, first of all, I gave you the big old title, the godfather of Zin. I didn't give it to you. Talk a little bit about your rich history here and your history with Zinfandel. Well, I started uh, Ravenswood back in 1976, and I made uh, 327 cases of Zinfandel in 1976, which was a little unusual. Really, there were only two other people who were making great Zinfandel in 1976. One of them was Joseph Swan, who was my mentor, who taught me to make wine. Uh, he actually wanted to make Pinot Noir, but he made Zinfandel, and he was like a great Zinfandel producer. And Ridge, and Ridge was really wanted to make Cabernet, but they made Zinfandel, but I really wanted to make Zinfandel because I thought Zinfandel was the most interesting grape in California. It was the grape in California that was really the most European, and I'd grown up drinking European wines. Uh, but it was dry farmed, it was low tonnage, it was planted in the right spots, and it had been in California since the 1850s, so it had really been adopted by California. It was the most planted grape in California in the 1880s and really through through prohibition it was now it's the most the third most planted grape um, Cabernet is number uh, two and Chardonnay is number one so Zinfandel kind of became my moniker and it produced wines that were really terrific I mean you know Zinfandel has got this like wonderful terroir based thing going on it tastes like where it comes from I was just in Puglia and they are Primitivo and they think that they are sort of the creators of the Zin but talk to us about the history uh, <laughs> I just was at a big conference and in fact we had people from Apulia in uh, in th at this conference. Uh, we now know that Zinfandel uh, is actually called Tribidrog in Croatia and that it's a very ancient grape. In fact, there are what uh, geneticists call the 13 founder varieties of grapes in Europe. So all other grapes in Europe are related to them. Turns out that Tribidrog slash Zinfandel is one of those. We began looking for historical records citing Tribidrog, and the oldest one we can find is a citation of a barrel of wine being sold by the Croatians to the Apulians um, in 1488. So it's a really, really old grape, but we had no idea about this for a really long time. This is all kind of new information. We're pretty sure that the clone of Zinfandel that we have here in California came from Croatia to Austria to New York to Boston and to California. Holy smokes, Joel, you are the godfather of Zinn. <laughs> Gary, is this just like every day you're getting a new lesson about Zinn? Pretty much. <laughs> yeah, fantastic. I love this. I could literally talk for another 45 minutes with you about this, and I'm probably going to. But Gary, so we've talked a little bit about the past. You are the director of winemaking and the general manager here at Ravenswood. Talk about what's happening at the winery now and what you guys are hoping to accomplish in the future. I just started my, my second stint at Ravenswood after an absence of about eight years. Prior to that, I was working for Joel from 1999 through 2007. Coming back, I think the, the focus is really on doing what we do best and really reinvigorating our commitment to these single vineyard designate Zins. Zinfandel is this amazing terroir-based grape that really showcases the properties that it comes from. For me coming back, it's really uh, just an opportunity to kind of refocus on those wines and really uh, our commitment to the quality of our winemaking. For someone at home who's watching, uh, they know Ravenswood, obviously picked up a bottle at the store, but they don't really know like terms like single um, vineyard designate and that sort of thing. Can you tell us a little bit, what does that mean? That wine in that bottle came entirely from a single vineyard, as opposed to say our Sonoma County Zen or our Lodi Zen, which is from a, a group of vineyards from those areas. Each one of those bottles really, they tell a story. And one of the things we love about Zinfandel, as Joel was talking about, it is this 
variety that is California's heritage variety. When you drive around uh, the north coast here or Lodi areas, you see these gnarly old head trained vines. That's Zinfandel. You guys have two fantastic wines that you picked out for us. I thought it'd be fun for Joel, you to pick one out, for you to pick one out, Joel, and for Gary, for you to pick one out. Which one do you guys want to start with? I'll start with the Lodi. Okay, and fantastic. Then, and then Joel can talk about Old Hill. Since I grew up in the San Joaquin Valley, you know, you can take the boy out of the valley, but you can't take the valley out of the boy. So. Yeah, so I got to say, I learned from uh, Gary here, grew up in Visalia, and I uh, I was born in Hanford. My mom grew up in Layton, and your, and your family's from Tulare County, so I just wanted to give my Central Valley shout out there. The Lodi Zinfandel is... Um, a little bit warmer growing region in the interior of California, basically due east of um, the San Francisco Bay. But unlike the rest of the San Joaquin Valley, it has a little bit of a cooling influence from the Sacramento River Delta and as well as that proximity to the bay. So we really get this beautiful ripe expression of Zinfandel. We pick it in a way that it doesn't get overripe. And the reason I chose this particular wine to show is that this, uh, I would say, of all of the wines that we produce in our portfolio is probably the best value. And so this one is relatively easy to find on the shelf in the grocery store, typically somewhere around $11, $12 a bottle. And a lot of times uh, at home we hear terms like old vine zen and we're going, okay, what the heck does that mean? What the heck does that mean, Gary? Yeah, so there's no true legal definition for what old vine zen is. For, That's why we're all so confused. <laughs> yeah, for, for a Zinfandel house like us, Joel, myself, old vine zen is, is exactly what I said a few minutes ago. It is those old, gnarly, head-trained vines, in many cases over 100 years old, um, that are really this uh, heritage variety of California. And then tell us uh, the wine that you have here, Joel. Well, I chose this wine because it's the most obscure and most difficult to get of any of the wines we make. Yes, let's get it. <laughs> 20 bottles to go now. Uh, so this is Old Hill Ranch. And Old Hill Ranch, I believe, was the first vineyard put on rootstock in California, 1885. Uh, it was originally planted in 1861 by a guy named William McPherson Hill. Mr. Hill was one of the really early planters. Uh, Mr. Hill made his home in the middle of Sonoma Valley. And in 1861, when he planted the vineyard, people didn't have any idea what to plant. I mean, really, there were no grapes in California. There was really no history. There was the Mission grape, of course, but that wasn't much of a wine grape. Uh, so they planted about everything. So when Phalanxer hit California in the 1870s, 1876 is really when we believe it got here, I began to wipe out Sonoma first because Sonoma was the most experimental and we, got it, we infected ourselves early. So the first vineyards replanted were done here. And Mr. Hill was, lived long enough to replant his own vineyard. So he more or less duplicated uh, the vineyard that he had in the ground. So a lot of those ancient grape varieties remain in this vineyard. It's a really interesting place uh, because not only does it have Zinfandel, it's about, it's about 76 or 77% Zinfandel, but it's got at least 24 other grape varieties in it. So this is a dry farmed old vineyard when we found it. I first saw it in 1975. It was covered with old cars and dead refrigerators and buckbrush and poison oak. Now this vibrant, you know, intensely farmed, um, organically farmed, vineyard looks like it's going to go for another hundred years. Some of the best aging wines come from this vineyard. So I am now opening wines I made from this vineyard in uh, the early 90s uh, that are terrific. Oh my gosh, I, I'm nervous to try it after this. This sounds like the holy grail of wine here. Looking back, you've had such an amazing career, um, Smithsonian, Vintners Hall of Fame, Godfather of Zen. I'm guessing when you started out, you didn't expect all that. Yeah, I think that's probably true. I wasn't really looking for that. I was a, a hippie with hair not quite as long as yours and a beard that was a little longer, and I was just looking to get back to something basic. I had been doing medical research up to that point, and um, it was kind of the back to the land movement, and so I was looking for simplicity. I was looking for something that wasn't too complicated, but I knew I loved winemaking, and I knew I loved the kind of the process and the grapes and the whole thing. So it kind of got out of hand. I, you know, I ended up with this very large winery, uh, which is great, actually, and I've had uh, a really amazing career. It's like quite amazing to be able to share what you do with that many people who love wine. But I'm 70 years old, uh, and uh, it's really time to sort of pass the baton. And, uh, you know, so I am slowly, and I do mean slowly, working myself out of a job. Uh, and I refer to Gary as the prodigal son, because when 
it became, um, became apparent that it was time for me to start thinking about you know, how we were going to go forward with this winery. Uh, there was only one person I wanted to do that, and that was Gary. And he had been off you know, doing other things, as you know. And, uh, but he was willing to come back and, uh, and really take up the reins and carry forward with Ravenswood. I mean, hearing Joel, the godfather of Zen, sort of speak with you in this, in this way and kind of pass that on to you, uh, I got to imagine that's got to feel, I don't know, tell me how does it feel? Oh, it, it, feels, uh, it feels great. I think um, uh, the best thing about, um, that I can think of of Ravenswood is just the people here at Ravenswood. We have... Um, really this shared vision for what Joel created and, and in terms of uh, showcasing these amazing vineyards and this amazing grape variety. Uh, so opportunity to do that, to work with the team of people here, to work with Joel again, um, it, you know, it's, uh, yeah, it's a dream come true, really. I appreciate it that much more now that, uh, that I'm back with, the, back with the family. Awesome, and I appreciate that you guys took this time to share your, this story with me because this is just fantastic, these awesome wines. Does anybody have a cheers or a toast, anything they say? What do you say around your house? Ah, we just say, Sante, to your health, drink well, live long. Live long, <laughs> cheers, and drink zen. <laughs>